So my name is Laurent De Segur. Uh, I'm a VP at uh, Walmart Labs uh, in charge of customer experience. Does everybody know uh, Walmart? OK. Uh, so Walmart is a very large company. Um, by all means, we have about uh, 11,000 stores, which is basically located, located in 828 countries. And we have also 11 websites. So for brands like uh, Walmart.com, Sam's, Asda. Asda is probably more popular in, in Europe, as you probably know. And uh, so the size of the stores represents a large coverage uh, of retail space. And uh, Walmart is the number one retail brand in, in the world. We also have 11 e-commerce websites, which are representing a lot of variety between customers, memberships. The reason I'm presenting that is for you to understand the scale of the operation that Walmart represents and where we are applying AI. So I'm not drifting away from the topic. I just want you to realize that the scale of the company requires a lot of processing of data, a lot of understanding of what customers do, and a lot across stores and the websites. What we serve on the websites are 50 million items. Uh, it's actually a little bit more now because we keep uh, unrolling a lot of marketplaces. With these items we are unrolling, we're basically very, very dependent on the quality of the data. And I think that's where I would like to emphasize that AI and specifically machine learnings are really depending on the quality of the data. In fact, most of the things we are doing are around validating the data in terms of assessing what are the inputs for trying to make sure that the data makes sense and we can reconcile and present it to the customers. That said, we also have a very, very important mission with uh, the things we are implementing in, around machine learning and AI, which is we call the digital relationship, which is a bridging, do the image here, the bridging between what is on the site, how people shop on the online, and how do they shop inside the stores. All of that requires basically the understanding also of patterns of detecting how customers will shop, will decide what to put on their cart, how do they want to have it delivered, and we offer multiple methods of deliveries, including the uh, pickup to stores, which, are, which has become a very, very prevalent method for distributing uh, uh, items, since basically people want to save money. And uh, so you're seeing now other competitors going back to the retail space for the reason that with all the stores we have, we can deliver very closely to customers. We also recently introduced the association of Walmart and Google Home. So this is you know, an interesting thing because coming from an AI background, uh, where at the time where data was not so prevalent that it is now and with machine learning, I think this is basically the characterization on how customers understand AI. For them, AI is what is new, what is coming out from conversation from the fact that basically they can communicate with computers that understand what they're saying and understand how they want to shop anywhere. So what we wanted to do here with the case of Google Home is basically try to associate the shopping experience with conversation UI. And what we found out uh, is that uh, people are really okay to shop and reorder for some items, but it's very difficult to start conversation and open dialogues with these devices. So where it comes down to is that we have a lot of experimentation, and we also use some of the data we were using on the search uh, sites, but we realized that the data that people type when they type a search query is not a dialogue. They are not interested about dialogue. They are trying to basically compact the information to exact match. So that said, we are very excited about you know, the, the uh, opportunity to continue exploring other methods of shopping, including you know, supporting more skills in Google Home when it comes in. These are the things that basically we cover. There is a lot of stuff we cover at Walmart, not only on the front end with the case of uh, Google Home and all of the things we're trying to get out of uh, the uh, uh, patterns that people are using for shopping on the site or even for shopping in the store. It's also a lot of stuff on the back end. When I look at these uh, uh, systems, for example, I realize that we have search recommendation personalization. And these are problems that we've been trying to solve all the time you know, using traditional methods. But right now, it seems like there are a lot more emphasis on trying to develop new paths to get search. For example, today, we realize that 
folks now come because they've seen you know, what is possible with new medium. They're trying to basically type complicated queries. So now we have not only the decision to find a SKU in uh, an item in the catalog, very specific SKU, we also need to find out what is the complexity of the query that they're typing in the case of variants, in the case of you know, like different type of styles, or simply substitution. We want to understand better the customers. And what it comes down to is going back from the catalog of data to the user preferences and trying to match basically what people want to see when they type specific queries. So I'll get an example. For example, in the case of groceries, my profile says I shop mostly organic. I don't want to tell anyone I'm like organic food, but I want the system to understand I like this type of item. Therefore, you know, we need to create systems that are enriching the queries and semantically analyzing the results for us to boost this type of results. In the case of fulfillment, we're a full delivery house. So we have like systems of delivering through the uh, distribution center, fulfillment center to the home of users, or even to simply uh, other stores for them to pick it up. And that is solving, uh, basically we're using AI and specifically ML to solve NP problems without basically the quality or maybe the precision what we would do in different algorithm, but we're learning very quickly with, with the data we are getting. So the philosophy of Walmart is every dollar price. And of course, to do every dollar price, we need to make sure that we understand uh, how much our competitors are selling some products and trying to basically quickly adjust the prices that are displayed right here on the board. But you know, we are basically, when you show up online, you need to get this information right away. And these are huge, huge quantities of computes or processing we need to install to get to the quality of every dollar price, because the philosophy is marked by the, the brand of the company and the reputation of the company for doing that. So we are putting a lot of emphasis on learning new information through uh, uh, you know, the systems we're building. We are also trying to uh, basically make sure that people shop safely, meaning basically their system or their account is safe. There are also uh, the notion of now we implemented the notion of organizing transaction and making sure that uh, people are recognized uh, as good people uh, when they are, and making sure that also we are learning through risk uh, management and also uh, uh, basically fraud detection, all of the uh, things that people do. Maybe uh, you know a little bit uh, sensitive, especially where I am in Europe, about privacy and data. But what we are doing is we are emphasizing the fact that all the data we treat in that case, are very anonymous. That requires more work, by the way. Now we have also these towers that are letting people pick up the stuff that they want in the store. I'll get you an example. You're in a store, you're looking for something, you don't know where it is, and you don't want to spend five minutes looking for the L, where's the thing here. Or if you come to the L and it's empty, well, that's a bummer. You don't want to go home and not uh, get you know, anything in your uh, shopping cart. So what we have here is a system that are installed in the store for people to pick up what they have ordered online or what they order directly in the store when they're on their mobile. And we experience that from the 260 million people who are shopping worldwide uh, weekly to the 140 million in the US, 22 million people are shopping with their mobile phones in their hands, and they're shopping while they're basically browsing the aisles. And so for us, we have a notion of connecting again the two worlds. We also, like I said earlier, we have a system of delivery which is very, very practical for people who are very busy. Of course, this is the example of a, an NPS uh, uh, result of 90, which is pretty, pretty amazing because when you know, uh, you know what competitions are doing, we're trying to really, really pr be prevalent. Here, you know, mothers, kids, uh, they don't want to even go in the store. They want to get uh, their shopping bags in the back of their trunk. And to do that, we have the whole logistic of the system. We're basically trying to encourage uh, you know, systems that I've seen also uh, implemented in France. You know? So obviously, there are uh, you know, other people moving in that space. But what we're doing here is trying to do it at the scale of, again, 5,000 stores and uh, lots of people. It's also noted that when we come to holidays, suddenly it's well known about Walmart. I don't know if you guys uh, watched some of these videos on YouTube at one point, but there is a craziness about people trying to drive to the store and get something after a Thanksgiving dinner. And our site, for example, uh, traffic is blooming by 10x. So the information that we are trying to treat through the air 
which are basically tons of data. We have petabytes of information we are trying to treat. Needs to be multiplied by 10 around that time to be able to, to provide the same real-time information uh, to the customers. And this is a challenge of basically scaling capacity. Sometimes this capacity can be linearly applied. Some other times we have a problem of exponential uh, uh, processing where we are trying to basically uh, become less accurate again on the type of data, but still prevalent for the users. So what we do in that case, we're basically mixing uh, returns or search results with different type of semantic analysis. Again, this is all uh, real time. We're trying to basically scale very much at the time where we are processing the data. Recently, we also, uh, recently, about, uh, of course, pilots start very much earlier than people, uh, you know, learn about it. We've basically introduced a couple of years ago in Sam's Club, uh, one of our brands, basically the notion of scanning items yourself and leaving the store by showing just a receipt through uh, basically the lines. So again, another drawback of the popularity of the store is that sometimes the line can take 30 minutes just to check out the items in the cart. And so what we are trying to do here is remove the pain points. So why am I talking about that during a, an AI uh, meetup here? I think it's because the whole processing thing that needs to happen in the back. Here again, you're trying to basically target folks that have good uh, reputation because they can walk away without being, uh, you know, uh, asked for more questions, and this is very important. The other thing we are doing here is we have also a notion of uh, inventory, so we are tracking basically tons of uh, information around the, uh, uh, the availability of items, the assortment, and some of the things on the substitution as well. What represents this thing? So I'd like to step back now that you know, you know the problem we're facing here and trying to define a little bit about the strategy of implementing AI for uh, Walmart, and specifically machine learning, which is very prevalent. For me, the pain point uh, we're trying to solve here is essentially trying to go through the phase of evaluation. So you all know how to develop a product, and I, I'm going to basically skip very lightly on that. So you have a phase where you're thinking about the features. Then you have a phase where you're designing the feature and then the implementation. We found out that this is very easy compared to the rest when it becomes machine learning. For example, the tuning phase is critical for us. We are like basically testing at a level where we select specific stores, in that case, or specific products, or even specific segment of uh, customers. And we are basically testing uh, very highly the information that we basically analyze with uh, you know, uh, strong uh, uh, patterns of uh, recurring uh, uh, events. The other thing I want to say is that we come up not only with one strategy in most cases, we come up with multiple strategies. Of course, you know, we are very creative. We're trying to get, you know, ahead of uh, everybody's competition. And so we get to strategy A, B, and then we are trying to basically implement the same thing, and we're developing it, and we're releasing it. And what costs is it? It's not to implement these two strategies, I believe. What is important is about the evaluation between all of the strategies we are implementing. This is basically for us 80% of the time we're spending in comparing all the strategies we're developing. We care about the data that we're getting, and therefore we have you know, the uh, intention to only gather the information we need. But when you create systems who have multiple, which have multiple dimensions, I think it comes down to basically be very selective at the same time, trying to understand, I would call it the bias that you introduce when you select specific patterns. And therefore, you know, if your system will select specific things, you will understand that it's because the data made it behave that way. The other thing is that we don't want to get into a point where we don't understand what we're doing, and obviously we need to analyze this information. But I can digress and spend a lot more time on that, and if you have any questions, I'll be uh, in the backstage later on. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.